Chapters 1 through 4 of the Gospel according to Luke. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 1 through 4. Chapter 1. Seeing that many have attempted to draw up a narrative of the facts which are received with full assurance among us on the authority of those who were from the beginning eyewitnesses and were devoted to the service of the divine message, it has seemed right to me also, after careful investigation of the facts from their commencement, to write for you, most noble Theophilus, a connected account, that you may fully know the truth of the things which you have been taught by word of mouth. There was, in the time of Herod, a king of Judea, a priest of the name of Zechariah, belonging to the class of Abijah. He had a wife who was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both of them upright before God, blamelessly obeying all the Lord's precepts and ordinances. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both of them were far advanced in life. Now while he was doing priestly duty before God in the prescribed course of his class, it fell to his lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the sanctuary of the Lord and burn the incense. And the whole multitude of the people were outside praying at the hour of incense. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense, and Zechariah, on seeing him, was agitated and terrified. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call his name John. Gladness and exultant joy shall be yours, and many will rejoice over his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. No wine or fermented drink shall he ever drink, but he will be filled with the Holy Spirit from the very hour of his birth. Many of the descendants of Israel will he turn to the Lord their God, and he will be his forerunner in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn fathers' hearts to the children, and cause the rebellious to walk in the wisdom of the upright, to make a people perfectly ready for the Lord. By what proof, asked Zechariah, shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is far advanced in years." I am Gabriel, who stand in the presence of God, answered the angel, and I have been sent to talk with you and tell you this good news, and now you will be dumb and unable to speak until the day when this has taken place, because you did not believe my words, words which will be fulfilled at their appointed time. Meanwhile the people were waiting for Zechariah, and were surprised that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. When, however, he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they knew that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary, but he kept making signs to them, and continued dumb. When his days of service were at an end, he went to his home, and in course of time his wife Elizabeth conceived and kept herself secluded five months. Thus has the Lord dealt with me, she said, now that he has graciously taken away my reproach among men. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a maiden betrothed to a man of the name of Joseph, a descendant of David. The maiden's name was Mary. So Gabriel went into the house and said to her, Joy be to you, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was greatly agitated at his words and wondered what such a greeting meant. But the angel said, do not be frightened, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you are to call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his forefather David, and he will be king over the house of Jacob for the ages, and of his kingdom there will be no end. How can this be? Mary replied seeing that I have no husband. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
and for this reason your holy offspring will be called the Son of God. And see, your relative Elizabeth, she also has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For no promise from God will be impossible of fulfillment. I am the Lord's maidservant, Mary replied. May it be with me in accordance with your words. And then the angel left her. Not long after this, Mary rose up and went in haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. Here she came to the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the babe leapt within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and uttered a loud cry of joy. Blessed among women are you, she said, and the offspring of your body is blessed. But why is this honor done me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the babe within me leapt for joy, and blessed is she who has believed, for the words spoken to her from the Lord shall be fulfilled. Then Mary said, My soul extols the Lord, and my spirit triumphs in God my Saviour, because he has not turned from his maidservant in her lowly position, for from this time forward all generations will account me happy, because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his compassion is generation after generation upon those who fear him. He has manifested his supreme strength. He has scattered those who were haughty in the thoughts of their hearts. He has cast monarchs down from their thrones and exalted men of low estate. The hungry he has satisfied with choice gifts, but the rich he has sent empty-handed away. His servant Israel he has helped, remembering his compassion, in fulfillment of his promises to our forefathers, for Abraham and his posterity forever. So Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, and then returned home. Now when Elizabeth's full time was come, she gave birth to a son, and her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had had great compassion on her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and were going to call him Zechariah after his father. His mother, however, said, No, he is to be called John. There is not one of your family, they said, who has that name. They asked his father by signs what he wished him to be called, so he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered. Instantly his mouth and his tongue were set free, and he began to speak and bless God. And all who lived round about them were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea reports of all these things were spread abroad. All who heard the story treasured it in their memories. What then will this child be? they said, for the Lord's hand was indeed with him. And Zechariah his father was filled with the Holy Spirit, and spoke in a rapture of praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, he said, because he has not forgotten his people, but has effected redemption for them, and has raised up a mighty deliverer for us in the house of David his servant, as he has spoken from all time by the lips of his holy prophets to deliver us from our foes and from the power of all who hate us. He dealt pitifully with our forefathers and remembered his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham our forefather, to grant us to be rescued from the power of our foes and so render worship to him free from fear, in piety and uprightness before him all our days. And you, moreover, O child, shall be called prophet of the Most High, for you shall go on in front before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give to his people a knowledge of salvation in the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender compassion of our God, through which the daybreak from on high will come to us, dawning on those who now dwell in the darkness and shadow of death, to direct our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in character, and lived in the desert, till the time came for him to appear publicly to Israel. Chapter 2 
Just at this time, an edict was issued by Caesar Augustus for the registration of the whole empire. It was the first registration made during the governorship of Quirinius in Syria, and all went to be registered, every one to the town to which he belonged. So Joseph went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to David's town of Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to have himself registered together with Mary, who was betrothed to him and was with child. But while they were there, her full time came, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him round, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in the same part of the country, keeping watch over their sheep by night in the open fields, when suddenly an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were filled with terror. But the angel said to them, Put away all fear, for I am bringing you good news of great joy, joy for all the people. For a Saviour who is the anointed Lord is born to you today in the town of David, and this is the token for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And immediately there was with the angel a multitude of the army of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory be to God in the highest heavens, and on earth peace among men who please him. Then, as soon as the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go over as far as Bethlehem, and see this that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they made haste, and came and found Mary and Joseph, with the babe lying in the manger. And when they saw the child, they told what had been said to them about him. And all who listened were astonished at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, often dwelling on them in her mind. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, in accordance with the announcement made to them. When eight days had passed, and the time for circumcising him had come, he was called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before his conception in the womb. And when the days for their purification appointed by the law of Moses had passed, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be called holy to the Lord. And they also offered a sacrifice, as commanded in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem of the name of Simeon, an upright and God-fearing man, who was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. To him it had been revealed by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death until he had seen the Lord's anointed one. Led by the Spirit, he came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do with regard to him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Now, O sovereign Lord, thou dost send thy servant away in peace in fulfillment of thy word because mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast made ready in the sight of all nations, a light to shine upon the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And while the child's father and mother were wondering at the words of Simeon concerning him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary the mother, This child is appointed for the falling and uprising of many in Israel, and for a token to be spoken against and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the reasonings in many hearts may be revealed. There was also Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, belonging to the tribe of Asher. She was of a very great age, having had after her maidenhood seven years of married life, and then being a widow of eighty-four years. She was never absent from the temple, but worshipped, by day and by night, with fasting and prayer. And coming up just at that moment, she gave thanks to God, and spoke about the child to all who were expecting the deliverance of Jerusalem. Then, as soon as they had accomplished all that the law required, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong and full of wisdom, and the favor of God rested upon him. 
Now his parents used to go up year by year to Jerusalem at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up as was customary at the time of the feast. And, after staying the full number of days, when they started back home, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not discover this, but supposing him to be in the traveling company, they proceeded a day's journey. Then they searched up and down for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but being unable to find him, they returned to Jerusalem, making anxious inquiry for him. On the third day they found him in the temple, sitting among the rabbis, both listening to them and asking them questions, while all who heard him were astonished at his intelligence and at the answers he gave. When they saw him, they were smitten with amazement, and his mother said to him, My child, why have you behaved thus to us? Your father and I have been searching for you in anguish. Why is it that you have been searching for me? he replied. Did you not know that it is my duty to be engaged upon my father's business? But they did not understand the significance of these words. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and was always obedient to them. But his mother carefully treasured up all these incidents in her memory. And as Jesus grew older, he gained in both wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. Chapter 3 Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea and Traconitus, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, a message from God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went into all the district about the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of the penitent for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, The voice of one crying aloud, In the desert prepare ye a road for the Lord, make his highway straight. Every ravine shall be filled up, and every mountain and hill leveled down. The crooked places shall be turned into straight roads, and the rugged ways into smooth. And then shall all mankind see God's salvation. Accordingly, John used to say to the crowds who came out to be baptized by him, O viper's brood, who has warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Live lives which shall prove your change of heart. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our forefather. For I tell you that God can raise up descendants for Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, so that every tree which fails to yield good fruit will quickly be hewn down and thrown into the fire. The crowds repeatedly asked him, What then are we to do? Let the man who has two coats, he answered, Give one to the man who has none, and let the man who has food share it with others. There came also a party of tax-gatherers to be baptized, and they asked him, Rabbi, what are we to do? Do not exact more than the legal amount, he replied. The soldiers also once and again inquired of him, And we, what are we to do? His answer was, Neither intimidate any one, nor lay false charges and be content with your pay. And while the people were in suspense, and all were debating in their minds whether John might possibly be the anointed one, he answered the question by saying to them all, As for me, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose very sandal strap I am not worthy to unfasten. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing shovel is in his hand to clear out his threshing floor, and to gather the wheat into his storehouse, but the chaff he will burn up in fire unquenchable. With many exhortations besides these, he declared the good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being repeatedly rebuked by him about Herodias, his brother's wife, and about all the wicked deeds that he had done, now added this to crown all the rest, that he threw John into prison. Now when all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the sky opened, and the Holy Spirit came down in bodily shape, like a dove, upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my Son, dearly loved, in thee is my delight. 
And he, Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about thirty years old. He was the son, it was supposed, of Joseph, son of Heli, son of Matphat, son of Levi, son of Malchi, son of Janai, son of Joseph, son of Mattathias, son of Amos, son of Nahum, son of Esli, son of Nagai, son of Mahath, son of Mattathias, son of Simeon, son of Josek, son of Jodah, son of Johanan, son of Resa, son of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, son of Nerai, son of Melchi, son of Adai, son of Kosam, son of Elmadam, son of Er, son of Joshua, son of Eliezer, son of Jorim, son of Mathphat, son of Levi, son of Simeon, son of Judah, son of Joseph, son of Jonam, son of Eliakim, son of Malia, son of Mena, son of Mephatha, son of Nathan, son of David, son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz, son of Salmon, son of Nashon, son of Amminadab, son of Admin, son of Arnai, son of Hezron, son of Perez, son of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham, son of Terah, son of Nahor, son of Serug, son of Reu, son of Peleg, son of Eber, son of Shelah, son of Cainan, son of Arpachshad, son of Shem, son of Noah, son of Lamech, son of Methuselah, son of Enoch, son of Jared, son of Mahalalel, son of Kenan, son of Enosh, son of Seth, son of Adam, son of God. Chapter 4 Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and was led about by the Spirit in the desert for forty days, tempted all the while by the devil. During those days he ate nothing, and at the close of them he suffered from hunger. Then the devil said to him, If you are God's son, tell this stone to become bread. It is written, replied Jesus, It is not on bread alone that a man shall live. The devil next led him up and caused him to see at a glance all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you will I give all this authority and this splendor, for it has been handed over to me, and on whomsoever I will I bestow it. If therefore you do homage to me, it shall all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, To the Lord thy God thou shalt do homage, and to him alone shalt thou render worship. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, and caused him to stand on the roof of the temple, and said to him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will give orders to his angels concerning thee, to guard thee safely, and on their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any moment thou shouldst strike thy foot against a stone. The reply of Jesus was, It is said, Thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the proof. So the devil, having fully tried every kind of temptation on him, left him for a time. Then Jesus returned in the Spirit's power to Galilee, and his fame spread through all the adjacent districts, and he proceeded to teach in their synagogues, winning praise from all. He came to Nazareth also, where he had been brought up, and, as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and stood up to read. And there was handed to him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and, opening the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the prisoners of war, and recovery of sight to the blind, to send away free those whom tyranny has crushed, to proclaim the year of acceptance with the Lord. And, rolling up the book, he returned it to the attendant, and sat down, to speak. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he proceeded to say to them, Today is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. And they all spoke well of him, wondering at the sweet words of kindness which fell from his lips, while they asked one another, Is not this Joseph's son? Doubtless, said he, 
you will quote to me the proverb, Physician, cure yourself. All that we hear that you have done at Capernaum, do here also in your native place. I tell you in solemn truth, he added, that no prophet is welcomed among his own people. But I tell you in truth that there was many a widow in Israel in the time of Elijah, when there was no rain for three years and six months, and there came a severe famine over all the land. And yet to not one of them was Elijah sent. He was only sent to a widow at Zarephath, in the Sidonian country. And there was also many a leper in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and yet not one of them was cleansed, but Naaman the Syrian was. Then all in the synagogue, while listening to these words, were filled with fury. They rose, hurried him outside the town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, to throw him down the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them, and went his way. So he came down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, where he frequently taught the people on the Sabbath days. And they were greatly impressed by his teaching, because he spoke with the language of authority. But in the synagogue there was a man possessed by the spirit of a foul demon. In a loud voice he cried out, Ha! Jesus the Nazarene! What have you to do with us? I know who you are! God's Holy One! But Jesus rebuked the demon. Silence! he exclaimed. Come out of him! Upon this the demon hurled the man into the midst of them, and came out of him without doing him any harm. All were astonished and awestruck, and they asked one another, What sort of language is this? For with authority and real power he gives orders to the foul spirits, and they come out! and the talk about him spread into every part of the neighboring country. Now when he rose and left the synagogue, he went to Simon's house. Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from an acute attack of fever, and they consulted him about her. Then, standing over her, he rebuked the fever, and it left her, and she at once rose and waited on them. At sunset all who had friends suffering from any illness brought them to him, and he laid his hands on them all one by one, and cured them. Demons also came out of many, loudly calling out, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and forbade them to speak, because they knew him to be the Christ. Next morning, at daybreak, he left the town and went away to a solitary place. But the people flocked out to find him, and, coming to the place where he was, they endeavored to detain him, that he might not leave them. But he said to them, I have to tell the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because for this purpose I was sent. And for some time he preached in the synagogues in Galilee. The end of chapters 1 through 4 of the Gospel according to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Recording by Mark Penfold.